Now, in a more probing and transparent society these days, what role and responsibility do brands have in doing good and in bettering the lives of consumers? And if they don't, will we actually notice? This formed the start of a conversation this uh, past week with uh, Thomas Colster. He's a Danish advertising consultant and the author of an upcoming book about communication's pivotal role in worldwide responsible revolution. It's called The Bible of Good Advertising. For me, it's kind of advertising as a force for good. You know, I think we as an advertising industry has, has been partly to blame for kind of promoting excessive consumerism and, and overconsumption, consumption and, and that makes me even more confident mm. that we can also promote a more sustainable mindset, a more sustainable behavior. So what I really want to do with good advertising is, is, is um, actually kind of make the world better by making advertising better. Mm. So that's kind of how I see it. I mean, that's the, a very lofty idea. It is, it is. I it mean, is. the reality is, is, you know, is advertising is there to shut something in your face. Yeah. It's all about consumerism, isn't it? It is, it is, it is. But I think there's two sorts of consumerism. You can, you can easily promote a more sustainable mindset. And I think a lot of companies are realizing realizing that because of resources becoming uh, more scarce and because consumers really demand it. How much of all of this is just about brands feeling guilty about excessive consumerism and uh, destroying the environment and, and all of that kind of thing and they feel well they have to do it and it'll make them feel better and their customers feel better but they don't really take it seriously. I think a lot of you know, large companies like uh, PepsiCo, like Nike, are really, you know, are taking this very seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, in South Africa, for the last World Cup, they, um, they uh, created uh, all the team soccer jerseys mm -hmm. out of uh, reused PT bottles. It was a complete new invention, and I think that's only not just talking about it, it's also walking the talk. Mm. Good advertising, sustainability, I accept all of that, but some might say it could compromise creativity. Not at all, not at all. I think, no, not at all. I think it actually broadens uh, creativity because, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, how advertising is, is developing and in Cannes you launch the titanium lines to kind of see how advertising is becoming more integrated. Yeah. I think with good advertising, because now companies have to look at the whole life cycle of products, um, so in a way we can suddenly reinvent new products. We can create labels, there's a lot of things we can do. So mm. I think actually the creative landscape and the possibilities mm. with good advertising is a lot lot bigger than they used to All be right, you've, you've told me why brands need it, and yeah. I, thi I think you've convinced me. Um, is it difficult to develop a good advertising strategy? I can't help but compare it to how many companies had difficulties adopting digital strategies. Mm. And I think it's, it's a learning curve, you know. It's, and, it's an still evolution, and an evolution, I suppose. It is, it is. Mm. It's still relatively new, as you said, with, with the whole good advertising term and corporate social responsibility. So, you know, hopefully our companies will learn more and, um, um, yeah, I think they're catching on. Part of it, you also suggest, is about reassurance. I find this interesting. You write, in uncertain times, people look for leadership and determination, someone who can tell them that it's going to be all right, someone who cares. I'm a little unsure as to why it's up to brands to do that. I think that's a very important point in, in the whole good advertising movement. I think for a lot of, a long time, brands have kind of behaved like dictators. They've talked about being uh, stronger, bigger, better, cheaper. And I think now consumers don't really want to put up with that. They want um, brands really to care about some of the issues they care about. Water scarcity, um, you know, uh, 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 um, recycling, some of the things. People are concerned and they want brands to answer some of those mm. concerns. So I think it's, f for me, it's kind of moving brands from behaving like dictators to help actually behaving like democratic leaders and put forward almost like a political program to make the world better. Mm -hmm. So it's about not their self-interest, but it's about our shared interests. Mm -hmm. The challenge, of course, is to be absolutely authentic when it comes to good advertising, that those same consumers that you're talking about can see through any uh, opaque messaging. They can see when a brand is simply paying lip service to it. Yeah. That's the difficulty because within the organization, uh, the brands itself have to be living that sustainable message. Sure, that that's surely right. is the starting point. That's yeah. for sure, you know. They, but, but you know, when you work with branding, that's kind of what you do, you know. We, we, we put sustainability at the heart of the brand and but I think it's a good thing with social media, you know, brands can't get away with, with um, you know, putting mm -hmm. wrong messages out there. But for me, 
I actually rather want, if we got a dollar, I rather want a brand to say, save the world than consume the world. Mm. So in that sense, I think it's kind of like a, a first step for a brand in a more sustainable direction. So I'm, I'm not really like joining the wolf pack of people always talking about yeah. greenwashing and stuff like that. I think we should celebrate what brands are already doing. The views there of uh, Thomas Colster, the roles that brands are playing in the so-called responsible revolution. Until next time, goodbye to you and thank you for watching.